an era in which we are questioning the effectiveness of markets in producing the kind of society and economy we want to live in, it is more important than ever to have an objective debate about the role that markets and the state play in the economy. Is the state necessary only to correct market failures, or is it also needed to more actively shape and create markets and technological opportunities, and to promote growth which is not only smart, but also inclusive? So if we're rethinking the state, we also need to think, uh, rethink the relation of the state to its currency. Um, here in the United States, we hear President Obama frequently say that Uncle Sam has run out of money, and this is why we have to uh, adopt austerity, constraint spending, and so on. Um, and the question is whether there is any truth in this statement whatsoever. So we have been developing a new approach to money that I think is consistent with the history as, as best we can understand it. Uh, the truth is we will never know the origins of money. They're lost in the mists of time, as Keynes said. But I think that our story is consistent with uh, the facts as we know them, which is that the state has always been involved in creating a monetary system, um, state very broadly defined to um, just indicate some kind of uh, an authority with um, uh, a certain kind of power, we call it uh, sovereign power. There are many um, elements to sovereignty, but the one that we single out is currency sovereignty. And that is, um, we start with um, the recognition uh, that was pointed out by Charles Goodhart in a nice little phrase in which he says that the normal case is one uh, country, one currency. There are some exceptions to these uh, until the creation of the EMU. They were very small exceptions to the general rule. What we normally observe is each country has its own currency. So we start with that observation about reality, and this seems to be true as far back as you go in time. Um, one nation, one currency. The uh, authority, the sovereign government, chooses the money of account, say the dollar in the United States or the yen in Japan. <coughs> it uh, then imposes an obligation on the citizens or subjects, depending on the uh, form of government, uh, denominated in that same unit of account. So we have in the United States uh, the obligation to pay taxes. Now it does not have to be taxes. Uh, we, we have coined our own little phrase, which is taxes drive money, which focuses in on this obligation um, and the relation of the obligation to the money of account. So in the United States it is dollar taxes, but if you go back in time uh, before the mid-19th century, fees and fines were more important than taxes. Um, so it's not necessary that it's ta a tax, it is necessary that it's an obligation denominated in the money of account. The, the next step, logical step, <coughs> is to um, issue a currency denominated in the same unit of account. So the United States government issues the um, dollar currency denominated in dollars, of course. And then the final step is that the government accepts the tax payments in its own uh, currency. Um, and so we say at a minimum, if the government imposes a tax obligation in its own currency, we know it will create a demand for its currency at least equal to the total of the tax obligation. Um, and so this is a sufficient condition, that is a tax obligation, is a sufficient condition to drive a currency. Now, in addition, currency can be used for a wide variety of other things. We say that those uses derive from this initial obligation in the currency of account. Okay, so how does the government spend? The government spends its currency into existence. The currency itself 
is really an IOU or a liability. Uh, and uh, when we then turn to President Obama's statement that the U.S. government has run out of uh, money, what he's saying is that the government ha has run out of its own IOUs. And if you put it this way, it's pretty obvious that it's a nonsensical statement. You can never run out of your own IOUs. Now, I can write IOU on pieces of paper. I can hand it to you. I obviously can never run out of the IOUs. So this is a logical impossibility. Now, you might refuse to accept them. So if, if President Obama tried to make the claim that it's not that we've run out of currency, it's that we have run out of people willing to accept the currency, that could be a true statement, but it's fairly obvious obviously not true. Uh, there are plenty of people who want uh, U.S. dollars, both domestically and foreign. There is plenty of demand for the U.S. currency, so it's not true that we can't find willing takers of U.S. dollars. So the, the whole statement is nonsensical. It can't possibly apply um, to the United States um, or to uh, any other sovereign government that I know of. They don't run out of their currency. Uh, can a government spend too much of its own currency into existence? The answer to that is obviously yes, it can spend too much. How would we know if it was spent too much? Well, we would have reached full capacity utilization. We would be at full employment so that any further spending would necessarily be inflationary. So the, the problem with too much government spending is inflation. So if we return to uh, the current situation in the United States, States and in most of the rest of the world is the problem that the governments are spending too much and causing inflation. The answer in most cases is absolutely not. There's a greater danger of deflation around the world today than there is of inflation. So it's um, uh, pretty uh, obvious that we're not in a situation where the U.S. government is spending too much driving up prices. We actually have the opposite problem. Now to turn to the um, question of uh, investment and innovation uh, and uh, whether the U.S. government could afford to do more to encourage investment and encourage innovation in uh, particular areas that are of concern, it's pretty obvious that the U.S. government could afford to spend more because it is a sovereign currency issuer.